Hello, my name is Andrew Gary, and welcome to Seismic Sound Off, in-depth conversations in applied geophysics. I am joined by Dean Clark to discuss his new book, Basic Geophysics, co-authored with Enders Robinson. Dean joined the publications department at SEG in 1981 as associate editor of The Leading Edge. He became TLE's editor in 1984 and served in that capacity until retiring in 2013. Dean has written 100 scientific and literary articles covering all phases of exploration geophysics, including the history of geophysics, biographies of leading geophysicists, expositions of current developments and new trends, and mathematical tutorials. Visit seg.org slash newbooks to learn more about basic geophysics. Our discussion next. So I noticed this was your, this is your second book with Enders Robinson. You did a book about Sherlock Holmes and Albert Einstein as your, as your first one. Uh, what was it like writing a second book with Enders? Well, I, I'm in a unique position in this in that I'm author and reviewer because my participation in this book was 25 and 30 years ago. And uh, Enders came about a year ago and said he wanted to put together some of these articles he'd written years ago. And I said, fine, but I've been retired. And the only math I've done about three years is to sort of balance my checkbook within margin of error. <laughs> and he said, fine. <clears throat> so he uh, did nearly all the work, and the book came out, and I was delighted with it. <laughs> it That's really hung feeling. together very nicely. And said, "Yep, Ender's, Ender's knew what he was doing as usual." <laughs> so, what would be a sixty-second summary of basic geophysics? Well, I think the approach we took in teaching these concepts is to uh, add a lot more history into how uh, these ideas developed and, and who the people responsible for developing them and why they were thinking that way in that period of time. And I think that's somewhat of a unique approach. Most uh, uh, textbooks teaching new concepts don't really go into that, and I think it adds a lot. I, I was hearing from my colleagues that you were very interested in the history of geophysics, and I, I thought it was interesting in that introduction you're going back to the the Greeks the ancient Greeks and I was curious what was what do you see the role of the Greeks in modern geophysics well the Greeks and uh, uh, actually I look at that a little differently the, the Greeks and uh, all the ancients did uh, made amazing advances in in mathematics uh, Euclidean geometry is what, like 330 B.C. when he put it in. Archimedes uh, came very close to inventing calculus. Hmm. So my question is, why did mathematics then stagnate for a thousand years? Hmm. <laughs> I think that's, a, that's yeah. the more interesting question. <laughs> did you find a satisfactory answer to that? No, I'm not retired. <laughs> <laughs> You also open, uh, I like the opening quote by William Warsworth that you choose, come forth into the light of things, let nature be your teacher. What is the significance of that quote for you? For me, for the earth scientist, his uh, profession is essentially one giant inverse problem in that we know the answer. The answer is what we see and what we measure so that no matter what theories that the scientists come up with, they have to end up there. Hmm. What physical forces, what geological process over billions of years led to this? And in geophysics, there's a problem, as I say, because nobody made a baseline survey like four billion years ago <laughs> that we could compare with. <laughs> yeah. Every hundred years, you know, you just have to mark that down to management error and move on. It's, it's, a, it's similar to, I think, life in general is kind of an inverse problem, that we solve inverse problems every day. A classic example is if you've got tickets to the theater at 8 o'clock tonight, well, that's the answer. You have to be in your seat at 8 o'clock if you want to see the start of the show, and then you have to work backwards. Do I need gas? How far is it? Uh, is there going to be a traffic problem? Am I picking somebody up? How long does it take to get ready? And that, that's the way we handle life is mostly a series of inverse problems you have to solve. 
I haven't heard it described that way. I, I like that a lot. Uh, in the preface, James T. Robertson writes that if each reader can find an insight or two that were not previously appreciated, this book would accomplish its purpose. I think a worthy goal for every book. You know, what were what insight or two did you gain in writing the book? Uh, thinking that over, the best the insight that I gained was uh, an appreciation for the great Dutch scientist Huygens, hmm. who. I don't think as much appreciated in uh, people like me that were raised and educated in the United States. We, in the general public, knows Galileo, Newton, Einstein. Huygens should be up there with them. It may be different people uh, raised, educated in Europe might appreciate it, but uh, his contributions were incredible, I think, and he should be at the very top level with all those other guys. Could you share a little bit about more of where Huygens, the namesake principle, comes from and, and what that is? Uh, there is a story that he was looking at a pond and saw the waves right. and so forth. Uh, what's interesting, of course, is that Huygens came up with uh, his wave theory, which was uh, dismissed for a long time because it disagreed with uh, mm. Newton, who was considered the overriding genius. Uh, then about 100 years later, they decided that Huygens was right and Newton was wrong. And then about 100 years after that, they decided they were both right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win. <laughs> that said, science is interesting. Yes, it is. I, I thought it was interesting you took a lot of time writing about the importance of visual imagery and even go into the different types of uh, what that means. I, I'm curious, what, what does it mean to you, this idea of visual imagery, and especially for a geophysicist, why do you think it's necessary for them to understand that to excel? Well, now we're getting into a, a tri tricky area of mm -hmm. how people think, and I don't mean how they come to their various opinions, it's how they process information. Mm -hmm. And I think people think differently. For instance, I, I am a believer that some people think algebraically, as in verbally. Other people, like uh, co-author Enders Robinson, and I think most people think visually or geometrically. Mm -hmm. As uh, Enders, you know, who's one of the brightest guys you'll ever meet, told me that he had tremendous problems with algebra the first time he took it. And I'm but mm -hmm. <laughs> you. <laughs> And I had, uh, likewise, tremendous problems with geometry. So I think uh, uh, you can't just read it on the page, the, the theory, you have to think about it. A very, a very smart geophysicist named Steve Hill, who's the former SEG president, told me, I think at least 15 years ago, that uh, if he was not working in an area and the latest issue of geophysics came out, he had trouble with many of the articles. Hmm. But many of these articles would eventually lead to a commercial product, and he would end up working with it, and then he would go back and read the article and get it. Ah. <laughs> so you have to, I think, visually, uh, you have to approach these things. They're not easy in many respects. They're counterintuitive in many respects, and you have to just approach them from various sides, visually being one of them. What motivated you? You talked a little bit about this. Enders came to you, but you know, was that the main motivation for you to be involved in this project and help out? Well, we had uh, articles that we had we had written that were published in in TLE, and uh, at uh, when we started that, Enders was living in Tulsa, hmm. uh, working at the University of Tulsa, and published these articles and. Uh, then we, we started to work on, on a book, and uh, then Enders got a job at Columbia and left, and this was before the email days and all that, and that kind of got put by the wayside. And I'd sort of forgotten about it, and so when uh, he, Enders told me he was going to do this, and then I saw the book, I was ast uh, really astonished at how well these articles uh, who've been been published months and sometimes years apart, fit together into a coherent whole, and that uh, the book we had been working on then filled out the last half very nicely. So I was quite impressed mm -hmm. with it. What would you say is uh, if there is like a main message of the book, or does the book have a thesis in your mind? It's not particularly with this book 
specifically, but with geophysics and exploration geophysics as a whole, I think uh, what the, the people in exploration geophysics have done over the years is absolutely incredible and uh, should be used much more than it is <laughs> in areas in addition to the oil business. But, uh, and this gives you a kind of appreciation that there are some people who have done absolutely incredible things and are going to do more incredible things, I think, in the future. What do you think would surprise readers the most in the book? I think uh, something is that the, the, the basic theory is, you know, you put energy into the ground, record what comes back, and taking about seismic, and uh, then interpret it. What I think would really surprise most people is that a whole bunch of what you record you don't want. It's in the way, and the, the skill is to get rid of the stuff you don't want without getting rid of the stuff you do want or without altering it dramatically, and that is extremely difficult to do, and that is one of the great contributions of, of exploration geophysics, that they have in the, overcome to a large degree these problems. Of, How is a little bit off the beaten path, but I was, I was you've talked about an interest in the history of geophysics and, and you know, how do you think a, a, your book even could contribute to a conversation about how SEG as a whole or exploration geophysics as a subject matter could help better contribute uh, socially or just even as we move into the future in, in more dynamic ways? As you say, perhaps to open the discussion and to show people that some of these Concepts are simple, but executing them is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get the answer to that, that's what you're going to have to do. It's not a simple process. What do you hope readers take away from the book? Is it is it that, that it's a simple process, but it's hard to execute? Or if they, if they took two things away, what would you hope that would be? The main hope would be that... Uh, Exploration geophysicists have done amazing things. They're going to do more amazing things. They need to be more appreciated. The public needs to become more aware of this. And uh, it, would, it would require some effort on people. You just can't say, well, we want the environment to be better. Hmm. We want better data on uh, what's going on. Well, this is the way you get it. It's, it's not easy, it's expensive, it's difficult to interpret, it's difficult to process. Uh, you don't get uh, a single answer because there's no possible way you could come up with enough equations to account for all the variables so that you could come up with, you know, x equals this, like you do in algebra. So uh, that would be the message. I'll close with this. I liked... Uh in the, in the foreword, uh, Moser wrote that geophysics is concerned primarily with classical concepts, yet geophysicists should learn from quantum mechanics and relativity and not to think there is a single black box solution to all geophysical problems. Do you see this as a concern for geophysicists today and moving forward? What I see uh, is a concern is, is yes, uh, geophysicists essentially operate in the Newtonian world, they're not dealing mainly with subatomic particles and way out in space to get into quantum mechanics and relativity. What I think is going to happen is because of the massive amount of data that's now being collected and the way uh, computers are getting faster and faster at handling it, I really think that because of this, we're going to have some of concepts, scientific concepts that we have accepted for a long time are going to be seriously challenged, if not overthrown. I have no idea what they are, <laughs> but I would say this, I would be very surprised if scientists were not surprised right. in the coming years. <laughs> Any other final thoughts you would like to leave our listeners about the book? Well, as I said, uh, 
Uh, I retired some years ago, but I've heard through the grapevine that Enders, who now lives in Massachusetts, is uh, working on another book, so maybe he's <laughs> looking for a new co-author, and if you want to uh, work with a guy who's, uh, if he's not a genius, he's just one step down, this may be your chance. Okay, well the call is out, listeners. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Visit seg.org slash new books to buy basic geophysics today. SEG members save 45%. To receive this discount, remember to renew your membership today. 2017 memberships will expire on December 31st. 2018 member dues can be renewed online at seg.org slash renew from October 1 to February 28. Please send questions to members at seg.org. Members who renew before December 15 will be automatically entered to win a pre-selected book from the SEG Bookmart. If you enjoy the show, review us on iTunes. Your review helps others find the show. Subscribe to Seismic Sound Off on the podcast app of your choice to receive the latest episodes first. Seismic Sound Off is sponsored by the SEG Wiki, home to hundreds of biographies of key geoscientists, geophysical tutorials, and core content from the science of applied geophysics. Visit wiki.seg.org to learn how you can grow the world's first online geophysics encyclopedia. Original music by Zach Bridges. This episode was produced by Isaac Farley and hosted, edited, and produced by me, Andrew Gary. Special thanks to Susan Stam, SEG Books Manager. Thank you for listening. This is Seismic Sound Off, signaling off. <laughs>